Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today is Wednesday. It's whip and chat day. So welcome. If this is your first time uh, seeing my channel, hi. <laughs> Thank you for checking me out. Uh, my name is Rachel. Like I said, I live in Ireland and I diamond paint. Uh, I also do a lot of other crafts that you can find here on the channel. So if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and uh, ring the bell so that you're notified when I upload a new video. But today we're just going to diamond paint and we are working on Time to Witch by Oraloa. I have completed most of this canvas so far and it's a super cute little kitty. Uh, and I'm I'm really enjoying this this kit. I have to say it's just it's just it's a fun one. It's simple. It's not too confetti heavy, uh, and so we're just gonna we're gonna get started. I've only got these two small sections left to go, so I hope you'll enjoy enjoy, but also join me uh, in in doing a little diamond painting today. And I just noticed that this is a little bit off center so I'm going to fix that real quick. I'm using release papers that I got from another company. This is from Diamond Art Club and you can get it on their site. You can also find these um, silicon release papers on websites like Amazon but I just went ahead and got some when I ordered a uh, Diamond Art Club painting long ago. Um, but uh, just before I get started, some of you are very curious, I got this pen turned by Enablers Outpost. Uh, it's a hard one to really make out, but basically it's got a lot of pretty purple flowers and a pine cone inside. And it is really nice and thick. I've got these multi-placers that I got from Enablers Outpost as well. And um, I'm working just straight out of the bags for this kit. So you're going to see me kind of reaching over and grabbing baggies. Uh, but it's just because it's such a small kit. This one's a 30 by 40 centimeter. Uh, and it is just, I'm going to move the, uh, the lighting so that you can properly see. There we go. Um, <clears throat> where I am and what I'm doing. <laughs> But yeah, this is um, this is a cover minder that I got from Osnap oh Crafters Cafe. You can put a little bit of essential oil in here if you like. But right now my allergies are acting up, so um, I am not filling that with anything at the moment. Uh, let's. I've got a lot to catch you up on because I was on holidays for a little while. I took a vacation. I took a little break. I needed some time. And I just want to come back here and uh, and and talk to you all before I get into what happened last week and where I went and what I did. Um, I wanted to let you all know uh, something very important, and that is that my social media accounts, specifically Facebook and Instagram, are not working. So if you have been trying to contact me there, I apologize. Um, I cannot get into my accounts. It's a long story and it's currently still, you know, uh, under review and uh, I don't even know what's going on. It may even have to be that I get a new Facebook because they're not, they're not helping. <laughs> I'm not getting the review that I was promised. So I I don't know. I don't really know what to do. I've done everything that I can uh, within my own power to get my account reinstated, but it is, it's just not happening. I was not hacked per se, but um, something happened on a page that I created years and years and years ago. And it says that I went against um, the community guidelines and Honestly, I have not posted there in over nine years. I do not remember ever posting anything that could be against Facebook's community guidelines. So uh, it's really rocked me. I don't know if there was a bot attack that happened and somehow I'm being held responsible for that because it's my page, because I, I own the page or what. But even though they've decided to delete the page, which is fine with me, I don't need that page, I don't use that page, uh, I cannot get a hold of a human being 
uh, no matter what I try, and I have tried a lot. Thank you so much to Katie from Diamonds in Washi. She actually reached out to me and uh, and gave me some resources for how to gain access to the live chat feature. Unfortunately, it's not working. I cannot speak with a representative no matter what I do. Even if I try to make a new account, it will not allow me to. So it recognizes my IP address, whatever. Um, I just have to wait. I've been waiting since the 25th, 26th of May. And it is now... Well, it's into June now, so yeah, I'm annoyed <laughs> to say the least, but um, hopefully it will be fixed soon and we will be back on track. And if for whatever reason uh, my account is deleted, which would be a shame because I have a lot of beautiful pictures on there, um, all my friends and connections and everything else. If, I mean, if that goes away, I don't, I don't even know if I want to go back. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right now I'm just kind of fed up, <laughs> to be honest. All right. So how are you? How are you doing today? I hope that you're well. I hope you're a little bit better than me. I am battling my sinuses. My sinuses uh, do not like me right now because it is grass pollen season. And um, even though it is raining... And it has been raining all day. Um, and even though I have taken my medication today, I am still like this. So I do apologize if my voice turns you away from this video, uh, but I cannot help it. So last week, uh, it was, let's see, two weeks ago now, actually, Two weeks ago, on that Wednesday, the, I guess it was the 25th, wasn't it? I'm doing, just going to check my calendar. Yeah, the 25th at midnight, um, I actually set off for the UK with James and a friend of ours. We have been planning to go to this music festival in the UK for years, like literal years. And obviously COVID had knocked that out of the realm of possibility. Um, and this year, well, technically last year, we decided to just go ahead and book it and we'll see what happens, you know, because what's the worst that could happen? They cancel it and we just have to you know, wait for 2023 or something. Well, um, we, we did end up getting our tickets and, uh, we purchased ferry tickets. So we took a ferry over and it was quite the adventure. I, I will say that we got on the ferry and it was about, what time was it? When we got on the ferry, I think it was 6 a.m., something like that. Um, so we left We left with plenty of time to get to the ferry. Um, but I was so sleepy. I think I slept. I slept until we got to the ferry, which was a two and a half hour drive away, I believe. Um, and then... The ferry, I've never been on an Irish ferry before. Um, it was it was really cool, actually. Once we got on there, uh, they had all these different sections. And it was a lot different than the ferries that I have been on in the past. Like, I, I have been on um, Korean ferries before because I lived in South Korea. Um, and I went to Jeju. Uh, which is like a, you know, it's like a holiday destination, basically. Um, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site as well. But I digress. Um, we we got on, they had movie theater. Uh, it, it wasn't currently in use. <laughs> but they had like really nice seats that reclined and, you know, that kind of thing. I'm trying to think of another color to take. Okay, here we go. And... We, let's see, 
we got over there with no hitch. I was stitching, actually. I took over a project with me um, just to to do a little bit of stitching on while while we were in transit. I had obviously had no no interest in uh, stitching while I was at a music festival, but um, certainly in the waiting times. Because if you know me, if you've been here for a while, you know that I love those uh, those in between places like uh, airports and train stations and you know all that kind of thing. I absolutely love those in between places, and um, I had a good time. So I didn't get seasick. I did feel a little woozy because there was a um, a swell. But we got over to Wales in about three hours and then started driving again. Uh, drove through Wales. It was beautiful. It was very foggy that morning, and um, but it was gorgeous. Drove through Wales, got up to um, Birmingham. We went just north of Birmingham and to... Um, Derbyshire. And Derbyshire is lovely. It's just these big fields and tall old trees. It was it was gorgeous. So we made it to the the festival grounds and um started to look forward to our weekend we arrived. So that was th Thursday. And on Thursday, there weren't any acts really scheduled. There were a few, but because it was a Thursday night, they couldn't have loud music late at night. So they just played until the sun went down and then we were left to our own devices. <laughs> um, and But it was really nice. We got to meet some people and, you know, enjoy enjoy our first night just settling in and we were looking at the program and like oh my gosh the headliners were amazing so one of them one of them was placebo that was Friday night um, so I got to see placebo Friday night I got to see Patty Smith on Saturday night and then the flaming lips on Sunday night and it was amazing so let me tell you about it. So Friday, Friday we woke up uh, in decent time. We weren't really in a rush or anything. Um, James and my friend went back to the car to get some more supplies because we had like, I had purchased a camping table and some chairs and everything to take with us. So they went back to get supplies and I took a nice hot shower like having a hot shower at a music festival is just unheard of. <laughs> it's very difficult to do unless you pay for like, you know, really good camping, which we wouldn't, we just brought our own tents. Um, it was, it was phenomenal. It was, it was wonderful. Sorry. I needed a drink. <clears throat> um, I got a nice hot shower, um, got some coffee. We were actually set up next to this Next to this tent called the Magic Teapot, they had this almost like a yurt, but it was massive and it was wooden. Um, and they were providing hot tea and coffee for tips, basically. So you would purchase or rent a mug from them with their logo on it and they would do refills. And so we were, we were tossing them like you know, two pounds per coffee because, you know, they, they had to, they were there all day, <laughs> uh, every day of the festival and they deserved to have the, the money. Sorry, Luna got a bit jumpy there. Um, we had no problem, uh, providing them with that. We sat around until, uh, late in the afternoon. We were just sunbathing and you know, all that. I think it was probably three o'clock in the afternoon or so when we finally decided to go into the main area. And I'm kind of sorry that we didn't go in sooner 
because the acts that were playing on Friday were phenomenal. Some of the ones that I remember seeing, I think the first one that I remember hearing was a girl band called Nova Twins, and they do like metal, screamo metal, and to to tell you the truth, I've loved metal music since I was a young adult. I it's it's one of my favorite genres and it's hard to find a female lead that can that can scream uh and it actually sounds great. <laughs> uh when I when I listened to them, I was stunned. I was I was actually stunned. Um, and I immediately put them on my must listen to after this festival list. In fact, I couldn't even wait until the end of the festival. I was playing their music when we were just hanging out at the camp. Like that's how cool it was. Um, it's wonderful. Not only that there are, you know, there were female musicians who were representing metal, at this festival, but they were also black and that was really cool. It's, it's not very common to get that kind of, you know, exposure, I guess. I, I haven't, I cannot list many, um, people of color that do screamo metal music that I've heard of because obviously, you know, the exposure or you know, inherent, uh, this is a white man's kind of music thing, which always irritates me, but we're getting, we're moving past that now. I'm so glad. Uh, finally some representation in, in the metal world for, for women and people of color at the same time. Um, so love them. Rock the socks off. Uh, I was dancing right away. And then, uh, we listened to, I think the next one that I remember was Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. That guy has such, what did they say? They were calling it stage patter. Hold on a second. Okay. James just got home. You can probably hear him in the background. <laughs> you may hear noises as well. Uh, he's about to make garlic scape pesto. Anyway. Um, yes, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes were amazing, amazing stage presence. Um, just a really fun, fun act to watch. They were warming up for a placebo and to be quite honest with you, I was dancing so hard at this stage that like the, the, the energy had built up in the crowd and we were all just having such a great time at this stage that we were dancing and we were having fun and placebo came on and it was like someone had just deflated a balloon. Uh, I guess they, you know, they do their own thing or whatever, but quite honestly, it came off as incredibly pretentious. Uh, they did not engage with the crowd at all. They did not play any songs from their old album, you know, the stuff that would have gotten you up to dance. Um, and it was quite, it was quite boring. Uh, and I'm going to blame myself because I purchased this shirt before they went on. <laughs> so it was me. It was me. I'm really sorry. If you were there, it was me. I jinxed it. No, but seriously, um, we watched for about half an hour, maybe maximum. And I turned to James and I was like, I think I'm done. Let's go find Wilco Johnson because Wilco Johnson was playing, but he was in a different location. They had like, they had like five or six different areas, like stages. Uh, they had the main stage, which we stayed at for most of the time. Um, they had a woodland area stage, which is where Wilco was. Um, they had a big circus tent that was for the electronic dance music of the weekend. 
Um, and then they had like smaller stages. I remember they had a smaller circus tent that was like a Hawaiian themed one where smaller artists were at. Um, and they had a pirate ship, <laughs> which was also dance music. It was more like house and dubstep. It was outside. It wasn't in a, in a tent. And then there were other little areas, pockets, if you will, of music around the place. But the three main stages were, were those. Anyway, so we decided to, to hightail it. So we get out of there. And a lot of people seem to feel the same way as us. They were like, nope, we want to dance. We want, it's the Friday of the festival. I don't want to sit there and like just listen to really slow, sad songs that I've never heard before. <laughs> and I'm sorry if you're a huge placebo fan, but after after the afternoon that I personally had, it just didn't jive right. You know what I mean? And like I was saying later on, uh, with a lot of people that were there, it would have been nice if that was like a sit down gig where, you know, they're on stage and we're all like sitting around and just listening because we want to listen. That's, a, it's just totally different than the festival thing. You've got 10,000 people in a field <laughs> and the only thing that's keeping you going is dancing. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, we decided to go to Wilco's, Wilco Johnson. And, um, if you haven't heard of Wilco Johnson, go look him up. He is so much fun. Um, my, <laughs> just to, just to put this out there because I thought it was a uh, slightly funny, uh, but our friend that we were with said <laughs> as a joke, um, that they were nominated as the, the ugliest, uh, punk band ever in the UK. <laughs> um, but great tunes. Uh, we went there, we had to queue for about, oh, 45 minutes, I think. Sorry, I need some water. We had to queue for about 45 minutes to get into the woodland area because there were restrictions on how many people could be in the, in the area at once. You know what I mean? Um, and so we we finally got in there pushed up to the front we had lost actually we had lost james at that stage so me and my friend uh we were together uh and because i did want to lose sight of him he's he's 60 <laughs> i didn't want to lose sight of him right and um james james is fine <laughs> James is his own, his own workhorse. But the, the problem was that James is just a lot faster. So, um, James carried on ahead and then got sucked into the crowd and I could not for the life of me find him, even though I was like, I'm going to the bathroom, I'm going to the toilets. Um, I guess he didn't, he just went straight for the, for the Wilco place. And I did, I got a little bit sad because I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to find him. But it, you know, he didn't have a phone on him. Um, I figured I'd find him later on, you know, at the tent or whatever. But I was just like bummed about it. So blah, blah, blah. We were waiting, waiting. We get in, we push up to the front, have a few drinks. And then my feet started to get really tired. So I told my friend, I said, listen, I'm going to be right next to the tent over here. Um, you get, push up there, get as close as you can, enjoy, enjoy it. And I will meet you afterwards. I'm just going to be over here in the back. Um, so I went and I set up my camping chair and I chilled out and I just listened to the music and it was so nice just to kind of like hang out and listen and and relax a little bit because I had been on my feet for hours at that stage um even though I had the chair because <laughs> I was dancing and then um as soon as it was over we both decided okay I think we've had enough let's go back to the tent 
So we go back to the tent, or we're on our way back to the tent, when, what do you know, <laughs> we find James. <laughs> so on the way back, you know, there's, if you've been to a, an outdoor music festival with camping and all that, you know, there's different parts of the park and they weave you through different areas. And basically like right here was our camping area. We come up and if you go over here, that's the main stage. And if you go this way and up, this is the woodland stage. So we were coming back down to go this way to come back to the camping, right? And right about there, right before we were about to turn to head down, James was there. He was at a beer tent <laughs> and he was having a great time. Um, and it was like, oh my gosh, there you are. <laughs> um, and he was like, yeah, I was in the back and I was dancing to the to Wilco. And we were like, what? Are you serious? Hi, Luna. Hi, baby. Yeah, I'm talking about the time that I wasn't with you. We couldn't take Luna with us. Sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Go lay down, sweetie. I gotta tell the story. I gotta tell the story. Go lay down. Hang on a second. All right. Sorry. <laughs> she needed attention. So, it was wonderful. We met, him, met up with him and... We checked out the dancey tent because we weren't finished, but um, it was just very crowded. So we decided to head back to the tent and chill for a while. To be honest, my memories of that are fuzzy because it was Friday night <laughs> and so much more happened. Um, nothing too, too terribly crazy or off the wall. Like, you know, it was just we... It was the first time that I went to a festival and I felt really secure, I felt really safe. I felt around, you know, there were so many people there that were just like-minded and uh, easy to talk to and, and everything that I didn't feel out of place or anything like that. It was mostly people in, you know, middle age. Um, there were some younger people, but mostly they were, you know, 40s or so, which also helped. <laughs> it made me feel kind of, you know, a little bit just, it was less stressful. So we, let's see, we went back to the tent and from there, I don't remember. Saturday. Okay. So Saturday, Friday was James's night to get very drunk. <laughs> And I had decided that Saturday was going to be my day. Excuse me, I got to sneeze. Oh my goodness. So I, I was like, okay, it's my day. We're going to do, we're going to do what, well, not what I want to do, but I'm going to enjoy myself. Uh, or no, was it, wait, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No, 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 no. Yeah. Or no, wait, Saturday night was Patty Smith night. I have to, I have to go bring up the, the thing because I can't even remember what I saw when. Okay. So I don't have the, the book anymore. Um, the program that has the exact times and dates for each person. So this is going to be a little bit mixed up, I think, but I can tell you the bands I saw and what I thought. Um, I'm pretty sure that on Saturday we decided to come in a bit earlier. Uh, we saw, or no, we didn't because James had a migraine. <laughs> he had a raging headache. Um, uh, but we did get in there in plenty of time to see, I think we saw Do Nothing and, um, that's when we saw Frank Turner, The Selector, which was incredible. The Selector, oh my gosh, if you like, um, 
how do I put it? Like a like a reggae Brit style rap, like classic, classic. You have to you have to go listen to them. They're amazing. Um, the lead singer is in her seventies, I think. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, Porridge Radio as well was all right. Um, and I think Saturday night, we, well, Patty Smith happened as well. So when Patty Smith went on, right, it was like watching a legend. Like, obviously, <laughs> um, Patty Smith is an activist, artist. Fantastic human being. Um, she was very aware and in tune with the massive shooting that had happened um, in the States just before. And she did some spoken poetry as well. Um, she had to take a few little breaks uh, and her son was playing the guitar. Um, I think it was a bass, but I'm not 100% if it was bass or not, because at that stage, I had broken the seal. <laughs> and I was up near the bathrooms um, at the time. But uh, she was... And, and a lot of the bands as well were kind of like... They were like, oh my gosh, this is like brand new again. I haven't performed at a festival since, you know, the beginning of, you know, before COVID. And talking about how how much the music industry had suffered because of the pandemic. Which, of course, it had. Um, but it was just so interesting to listen to their reactions to it and she it sounded like she was gonna cry and she actually asked to take a picture with the crowd so you know do a selfie turn around and take a selfie with all of us and it was fantastic of course I can't go on social media to see that picture <laughs> but um yeah it was just it was amazing um <clears throat> I think after that we roamed around for a while. Memory is fuzzy. I do not really remember because Sunday was it Saturday night that we went to the dance tent? I think it might have been. Yeah, I think it I think it might have been cuz System 7 was going to be DJing and I was like all about that. Uh, I did not make it to System 7. They didn't start until like 1.30 in the morning and I did not make it to 1.30 in the morning. Um, <laughs> I think it was, let me see. Where's Magical Sounds? And I think it might have been... Nope. They're not, they're not really popping out to me like system seven. Um, but anyway, there was loads of electronic dance music and it was really nice. We were there and I was going to stay the whole time, but then out of nowhere, the sky opened up and it started to pour rain. And I had a feeling that it was going to happen, that it was going to rain. Um, and I had brought a poncho with me. But, of course, the boys didn't. Because, of course, they didn't. And, um... I decided that it might be a good idea to go back. Because I didn't know how muddy it was going to get. And I didn't, you know, blah, 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 blah. It was late. We were out all day. In the sun. And then... And then Sunday. <clears throat> Sunday was fantastic. Uh... On Sunday, we started with, there was a kind of like a fancy dress competition <laughs> where people 
I need number 25, where people came up in costume and, you know, I don't even know if they were trying to win anything or if they were just trying to get kudos. I'm sure it was just kudos, but it was, it was really fun seeing everyone in costume. Um, and I don't know, am I boring you with this? <laughs> it was just... It, it was great. We saw the Dunican brothers. Let me just see what what's the name. The Bar Steward Sons of Val Dunican. <laughs> they were hilarious. Um and that they started the day. Let me just see. What were the other ones? Yeah, we saw the Dunicans. At some point we saw the Ferocious Dog and the Mission. And then I think one of the best, it was the opener before the Flaming Lips, was the Hives. Oh my goodness. They were so good. Super energetic, just like Frank Carter was. Super energetic band and uh, got us up out of our seats. And it was just epic. Oh, and there was, um, what's her name? What was her name? She was a last minute addition. Her name was Emily something. Oh, that's going to bug me now. But she was just like Amy Winehouse reincarnated. Amazing. So yeah, and then... Um, what else can I tell you? We, we were there, we saw the Flaming Lips, they were amazing as always, from what I've heard, they are a really fun band to watch live. It was very, um, showy, which I don't think many of the bands that had been there were as performative as the Flaming Lips, but that is kind of what the flaming lips does they 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 put on a light show they you know your man sings in a bubble um it's fun to watch but again after the hives i was kind of like mm, i think we would just rather you get out of the bubble and just you know have fun or whatever but that's that's part of this show you know and i knew that going into it but it did feel a little bit out of place um it's kind of like dressing up for a Halloween party, but nobody else dressed up. So, uh, it was incredible. Uh, it started raining late that night. We turned in early Saturday night. That's right. So I did go, I did go on Saturday night to the dance tent, but on Sunday night we were all like, nope. We are so tired um, that we literally, I think we just went back to the tent and collapsed. Um, and Monday morning, it was raining when I woke up at 7.30, 8 o'clock. I did want, not want to leave the tent to take a shower. Um, it was just miserable outside. So... Um, I ended up going in the magic teapot place was closed. They were, they were taking down the tent. So I had to go buy a coffee for like four pounds. Um, but it was totally worth it because we were getting ready to leave. I needed that energy. Um, and then we started taking down the tent and leaving. I think we left the field. It took us three trips, by the way, to get back to the car. It was, and the car was like, I think I, I think I recorded it. It was, it was at least three kilometers to the car. At least. Um, which is a long way to walk with a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, we, we started the trip on the road. Went through Wales and... I stopped at Caroline Withington's house. So if you don't know Cal, Cal's All Crafts on YouTube, on TikTok, on Etsy. 
Um, she's a good friend of mine. Um, I consider her a friend. I've known her for several years since near the beginning of, of my journey here on YouTube. Um, and she's a lovely woman and I know her family and everything. Do you know, as in, I'd say happy birthday, <laughs> Do you know, um, and stopped in and she fed us, bless her. She fed us and gave us coffee and let us rest for a little while before we headed on the rest of our journey. Um, she was kind of halfway in the middle between the music festival and the port. And so it was just great to see her. Great to see what the girls are up to. Great to meet Grant in person, her husband. And it was just overall really, 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 really nice to be able to meet somebody that I have been chatting with almost weekly for years. Um, <laughs> and I wish, I wish I could see her for longer, really. Um, it was a really nice stopover, though. And then... That's pretty much it. We we got back on the road. We got down to the port. Had the worst dinner of the whole trip, in my opinion. It was not very nice. There is a fish and chip shop, shop there. Um, I did not enjoy my food. But it will do in a pinch, you know. When you gotta eat, you gotta eat. Uh, we got on the ferry, and our ferry was leaving port at midnight, I think. Landed in Ireland at, oh, I want to say it was like five something when we landed, and... We ended up, there's something wrong with my, my wax. That's why I'm like, really? There's something, there's something going wrong in there. Um, oh, and I can't even fit it in there anyway. Oh, well. Um, got off the ferry. It was early in the morning. Tried to sleep. And this is the thing. The ferry getting back to Ireland was less rocky and had less of a swell than going over to the UK. But somehow I had just managed to fall asleep in a sitting position when all of a sudden a woman a few rows ahead of us just lost her entire dinner everywhere and it would not stop. It just kept going and I was getting ill from it. So I had to leave, uh, and like walk away from that. I was like, Nope. Um, you know, everybody, everybody was making sure she was okay and she had someone with her, but, uh, yeah, it was two in the morning and I was like, Oh, I'm so sorry for you. There was like no crew there either. All the crew, I mean, you know how it is on a, if you've ever been on an overnight ferry before, the crew is hard to find. So eventually someone did get him and he cleaned up the mess and I was able to go back in there. But, um, our friend, oops, our friend who was doing the driving, uh, he, he did not hear it at all. <laughs> like he could sleep through an earthquake um you did not notice at all so I'm glad for that uh but then when we got to the other side hop back in the car get off the ferry and we had to drive all the way back and just to give you an idea we left so we got off the ferry around five in the morning and I think we got back here at 10. It took a really long time for us to get back and there were a few times where I was really concerned because, you know, uh, our friend had been driving for so long that I was worried that he was going to run off the road or something. But luckily, you know, nothing, nothing bad happened. Um, and everybody was safe and everything. 
but yeah, what a whirlwind. Now, I really want to go again next year. I really want to enjoy it, you know, and, and do these things again and again. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it next year um, because I am planning to go to the Stitch North retreat in Ontario at the beginning of May. So I have no idea um, if it's going to line up or, you know, if we'd be able to do it. But I know that James said he is not keen <laughs> on enduring that drive again. <laughs> Hi. Nice. Need some water. Hold on one second. Poor dog. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, if if we can fly, maybe. But then you know, how do we get our stuff over? And you know, what do we do? And I do not have the answers right now. But it was fantastic. I enjoyed it very very much. Um, and. I just, I had a whale of a time. It was really nice disconnecting. And because, because my Facebook and Instagram account was down. Oh my goodness. Ma'am. She does this. We think that she has a collapsed trachea. But it doesn't, it doesn't hurt her. It's just annoying to her. Uh, so, what was I going to say? I'm going to refill this if I can. Can I find my thing? Yeah. Um, nope. Lost it. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> oh, that it was, it was nice to unwind and, and, you know, get offline and not have to be thinking about social media or anything like that. And I literally couldn't like a, I could not check social media or anything. So, um, in my case, it was kind of an unwanted break a little bit. Um, but I welcomed it nevertheless. But now, now I want to get back to normal and I want to be able to communicate with you all. So, um, it's got to happen. <laughs> I've got to get back. Uh, one thing that I've noticed since I've come home is that I am diamond painting more. I am feeling the finishing frenzy with this piece. I want to get it done. So I'm pretty sure that as you're seeing this video, you're, you're likely seeing a video of me working on this piece the day before. So I'm, I'm filming this on Monday. It's a holiday here. Uh, today. So we have the day off and James does too. Uh, James just started a new job. So, um, that's a whole, that's a whole other story as well. But basically he started a new job and he has bank holidays off. Yay. And he's really enjoying his new work. Um, he's in the training period right now and eventually fingers crossed he will be able to work from home because it is quite a drive uh, but he has to wait until the training period is over obviously uh, but he says that he likes it a lot and he's finding it uh, really good and um, it really is just I wouldn't say it's his dream job but it's a position that he's been dreaming of for years it's secure, it's got good hours, you know, all that kind of, you know, we're old now vibe to it. We want, we want security. We don't want excitement, <laughs> um, bits to it. But with that being said, what, what I was getting at is that, um, tonight after dinner, we're probably coming back here and filming theory Tuesday. And if we're not doing it tonight, we're doing it tomorrow afternoon. So if you see this, and this is less work than what you saw yesterday, that's why. <laughs> because I did not film that first. I filmed this first because it's been a long time since I've been able to sit down and do a whip and chat and tell you all about things. 
Also, you probably want to know about Luna. Luna's doing a, a lot better. Um, before I left, she was having issues with her leg again. And before I left, I went to the vet and they gave her a bone infection antibiotic. And it seems to have done the trick. So Luna is not in any kind of pain or anything. And her, her, the hole that was happening is gone. It's all healed up. I'm still keeping an eye on it for a while, just in case the infection comes back. But, um, it seems like it was, there was some sort of infection going on in there, whether it was a bone infection, I don't actually know. Um, but the antibiotics treated whatever it was, uh, and it seems to have gotten rid of it, which is, or at least made it go away for a while, which is all we really wanted. And, um, she feels a lot more comfortable now. And me, I'm fine. I'm just the stupid allergies, man. If I could just... I wanted to carve out my sinuses uh, last Thursday. I did have a couple of messages saying, um, are you going live on Twitch today, um, last Thursday? And I had to say no because I can hardly breathe long enough to film a whip and chat. And then I'm, I'm actually going to go into the front room and lay down for a little while because <laughs> my nose, my nose is so blocked. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry for the sniffles. I'm going to let you go though. Um, it's almost been an hour and honestly, I'm not sure what else to talk about, but if you will do me a favor and leave me a question that you would like me to answer in my next whip and chat, I'll make sure that I get to those questions next time. Cause sometimes it feels like I'm just repeating what I say. Um, even though I know that's not the case, but look at how much work we got done. I tried, excuse me, I tried to get the areas with the most fill-in so I didn't have to change colors so often. I really don't like working for bags. Yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. Just give me, just, just a minute, please. <laughs> um, uh, she's demanding that I, that I wrap this up. So I knew that was going to happen, but, um, leave me a question in the comments please. And I will answer them next week. Uh, I would love to know your, your questions, whether they're crafting related or personal. Um, but I do, hi, I'm not done. I do reserve the right to choose and not answer the ones that I don't want to. Now I better go before my, my little girl has a temper tantrum, temper tantrum giving her the eyes. Okay. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope that you have a wonderful week. Happy diamond painting. <laughs> and I will see you all in my next video. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye.